Hello everyone, I'm Choyati. I live in India, hustle in between Calcutta and Shantiniketan, where I study history of art in Kuala Bhavan. Otherwise, I would like to call myself a visual decoder. My plan is to put a tiny portion of my research on the Indian matchbox packaging design that is pertinent to the motive of type weekend. What I assume is to celebrate and promote the art of type, lettering, fonts through various facets of it. Matchboxes are to be found everywhere in India right from a dingy kitchen to the holiest temple out there. The structural design of a matchbox, given the part that it plays in the product's usage, has not changed substantially, thus making it the oldest unchanged form of consumer product packaging in the arena of visual culture still surviving today. However, the graphic and typographic design of the visual and textual matter applied to the packaging has undergone considerable amount of change throughout its history. I am interested how uh, typography along with iconography acts as a dynamic vehicle for graphic design in India and adjacent countries. India has always been a collective approach and how the heterogeneous collective approach in India can unify to contribute towards a sustainable future for all as India servicially promotes the concept of unity and diversity, there is an urgent need of speculation on how design can contribute to an ideal mode of secularism. As many of you are aware that innumerable languages besides the popular ones like Bangla, Hindi, Kannada, Marathi, Punjabi, Oriya, Sanskrit, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu and so many others are spoken in India. And there is a problem, the Indic scripts or the Brahmi scripts that include the Dravidian and Devanagari writing systems still did not attract enough attention to have a systematic printing and typographic convention. So I'll come to it, it will be, be a part of today's discourse. So matchboxes are tiny and almost uh, you know, ephemeral objects of functionality. I will try to analyze the facets that influence the typography and adjacent iconography of the omnipresent designs. I am not a typesetter or a time scientist in the strictest sense, therefore I will avoid using too much of typographic jargons and the vintage labels that you will find in this presentation are collected by research from archives, filmonists and matchbox enthusiasts. The contemporary ones are photographed from my own collection of over 500 unique samples. Prior to World War I, most of the Indian matches were imported from Sweden, Austria and Japan and also from Czechoslovakia. In Calcutta, match industries were started under the auspices of Indian Swadeshi or Swaraj movement of 1905 to 1906 in which Bengal took lead. The dream of an Azad Bharat Varsha was emancipated in all and the sparks of brave resistance ignited across the nation. The British made goods were discarded, use of Indian goods made goods, uh, Indian made goods were promoted and the idea of a self-made uh, was Swadeshi and the concept of a self-sustainable nation was Swaraj. The contextual agenda of these mass boxes are what we call now as creative direct action. Innumerable such mass box designs were available that proved to be extremely important and effective method for spreading the message of independence and rightful partition that appropriated the zeal to experience the freedom once and for all. It is important to mention that in 1910, when Japanese immigrants settled in Calcutta, Japanese traders got good hold of the Indian market to introduce vibrant match covers composed of unique flat woodcut illustrations. The Japanese can be acknowledged in this regard as they taught the skills in match production to people employed in the small scale industries in Bengal. Post World War II, these skill laborers migrated to Tamil Nadu to find uh, fair, like favorable weather conditions characterized by um, dry weather and availability of plenty of raw materials to establish the matchbox industries. They settled around Shivakashi and which is called the mat, like still they are called the match kings of India and it is almost a folk household activity to manufacture matchboxes by hand in Shivakashi still now. To explore the ways in which typographers and typesetters and graphic artists address the adapt to, uh, and address and adapt to the societal changes, uh, rapid economic evolution and industrial development, we need to look briefly into what constitutes the type or the choice of design. 
A person has the ability to remember this recognized forms, words, letters, motifs, publicity, images that comprises our visual culture. We are continuously interpreting the popular visual culture without conscious knowledge. Unconsciously and subconsciously, we are all encountering these images, thereby getting affected, and the social fabric is also getting affected to a considerable extent. The matchbox labels that we encounter are of course a part of this regular culture and unarguably a part of large social collective activity with individuals possessing dissimilar memories and perspectives. The match cover designs identify peculiar cultural variations of aesthetics that screams of idiosyncrasy. It is a functional object, a conversation starter, uh, discarded often after one use and also might be a keepsake. Owing to the unmechanized small-scale industry, manual fonts are also noticeable, which are directly hand-carved, like for the uh, earlier Indian matchboxes, which are directly hand-carved on wooden blocks or directly drawn onto the lithograph sheet, like the lithograph stone for oleograph, like color lithograph printing. So, uh, uh, and the center of focus or the central container is called the medal, and the medals take form of badges, labels, and ribbons as uh, you know the designer finds fit and in the earlier uh, match boxes in the earlier 19th century and 20th century match boxes we come across primary colors and poor colors because of the cheap printing and simple layout uh, very less ornamental form fonts and letter forms uh, are in manual type settings and there is no like uh, device or, or a me mechanized type setting industry at that point of time so it's, it's all a very manual and a playful thing at that point of time. The entire matchbox over has the same kind of arrangement with medal or without the medal as a central container for the title or the brand name that is most often uh, juxtaposed by an emblem or a synonymous image which takes up most of the space on the box. This began to become a defining style. The fonts in the in the present day uh, you know uh, Indian match boxes are typesetted, and we we come across a lot of gradients and robust backgrounds and intelligent juxtaposition of words and icons, and we also find uh, various uh, you know commonalities and plagiarisms in the uh, modern day match boxes, and the expression of technologically evolved India come into play and. Uh, you, you, this, this would be a zoomed in conversation of the matchboxes and these matchboxes are, are very small, they are smaller than your mobile screen. So you have to derive from this uh, Kish typography and chips printing and colorful motifs. With the decade of Y2K or the 2000s, the graphic art sector encountered computer generated graphics and the GUI softwares like Photoshop, CoolDraw and Inkscape and many others that introduced scaling and working, warping of the fonts soon favorably engulfed the graphic art discipline and thus bringing in substantial changes in the imagery. The hybridity of uh, Indian culture lies in the fact that thematically they are completely different than the West and here the popular visual connotations are heavily dominated by local mythology, um, uh, auspiciousness, being lucky, um, magic realism and, real, um, and religion and most importantly religion. The typefaces that were uh, in popular use uh, such as Salons, Bodoni, Didot and others of, uh, of a similar modern serif style were the ones first applied to matchbox label designs. The typography of a matchbox label is dictated uh, by what is fashionable and hence available at the time. Some companies gradually began to use uh, sans serif fonts for greater legibility uh, and uh, bold typefaces work the best, uh, condensed grotesque uh, and serif fonts to gain immense popularity. We also stumble upon designs which are highly uh, intelligent juxtaposition of more than one fonts or fonts converted into icons as we see on the screen. The omnipresence of this ephemerality of the object proved to be advantages for the brands trying to promote their vices through the miniature surface of the matchbox. 
Um, and, and then we come across the archetypes and the prototypes and the, and the great plagiarism playground when, where there is this ship by Wimco. Uh, Wimco is a Swedish counterpart of Indian match industry and AIM, ITC's AIM. So these are the two archetypes and all of them, these are plagiarized uh, prototypes of, of these archetypes. And um, as you can see that they have uh, directly uh, and quite directly and pretty and, and, and in some very indirectly forged the type style and even uh, even even the and the dash mark and the superior or the quality uh, kind of uh, catchphrases even the color and even the even even the kind of motif or even the color of the metal that is yellow in the sheep or or the color of the metal in aim like like the concentric circles that come in the atm world and compass and colors so this is a this is a plagiarism playground and because there are no copyright laws that govern the uh, cottage sector goods uh, this idea of reflected glory becomes very prominent also in here we can see uh, taka tika tika all are same similar looking and the the vibe uh, it, it directly connects it, it directly connects the audience the consumers to the uh, long standing uh, tradition of playing cards in india uh, and uh, it does not matter actually to them and and there is and i say that there is no copyright laws that govern it and uh, by taking uh, the you know here also we can we saw in the last uh, uh, slide and also in this slide apple facebook and the whatsapp logo apple facebook whatsapp and all these guys never uh, uh, did something on for the match boxes but their uh, brand name is completely forged to attract a loyal base of consumers and so that uh, there's and so that this this the small cottage sectors can make more selling they can they can get more audience because these are already trusted brands so uh, and also about this baba horse this is becoming very famous nowadays and uh, this this bigger two baba horse and horse run are very recent collections and uh, uh, there are multiple of this and these are very few of them so the Indian Bazaar is pervaded by such examples and the Indian Bazaar or the marketplace plays an imperative role in shaping the vestigial art and design forms like matchbox packaging and the unorganized temporal bazaar is a fascinating site of investigation. It makes you realize that uh, why each area or state in India has a very 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 dissimilar yet a somehow co cohesive visual expression. As Ashish Nandi, a social theorist among many other things, rightly points out that India has three stages of readily identifiable popular cultures. One is folk culture, the popular culture of the rural people, uh, their local fairs, folk art, theatres and folklores. And the second one is mass culture, the popular culture of the country at a fixed uh, phase or fixed point of time. And like the regional films, city cultures, regional radio broadcasts, national fairs, etc. And the third one is the exportable popular culture and that is standardized and the popular culture that is polished and that can be exported globally, like the films that make into the international film festivals, uh, international fairs, globally aired TV channels, soaps, films, etc. Therefore, the popular culture of, uh, in a in truly Indian context is much more complicated than the West and it deserves intricate attention. Uh, as the Indian matchmakers, uh, and designers and the marketing agencies are maturing in their profession, their influence is penetrating the Indian society. All the graphic designers and visual communicators often work at the frontiers of socio-economical development. In uh, Indian cottage industry, still they are not as much acknowledged as the West. And therefore, the economic situation of these designers in this field is not at all integrated. And their quality of gadgets, machinery, praise is neither improved nor cutting the edge. <coughs> Let me remind you, the Indian designers who work for the small-scale cottage industries are not academic designers. Rather, they work in a truly bizarre environment and their devices or systems are more of a machine to them where they vent out their habitual creativity. So it's understandable that they do not execute prefetched theories or concepts of design. Rather, they come to a conclusion with trial and error. So there is a playful element always working in this context. 
Type 1 matchbox is uh, not independent in the Indian subcontinent and they are more often juxtaposed by images. The main reason uh, are based on several factors. One, the caste system had been very dominant in the recent past in India, which is why only the upper caste were allowed to study, leaving the rest of the population illiterate. And because of this high rate of illiteracy and no access to education, it became easier for illiterate people to identify consumer goods by images that stayed in their visual memory. The partition of India on, on the basis of religion saw a large number of migrants directly becoming refugees and saving their lives and settling down were, uh, and sti uh, it is still a great deal in India. And therefore, for the underprivileged, education became secondary and almost like a luxury. In India, there are more than 19,500 mother tongues, of which only 220 are acknowledged officially. In such a scenario, besides in using English fonts, a pictograph or a narrative image is essential uh, to express the message, however penal it is, and therefore communication finds a meaning where majority considers seeing more than reading. Apart from the freedom struggle, we notice a presence of a large array of matchbox titles or brand names that are written in English language. Even if the names of the brand is in uh, an Indic or a vernacular language, this is mainly because the academic and graphic design industry is burdened with a cultural hegemony in which even a popular script like Devanagari is marginalized. To explain this precisely, I would say uh, 200 years of colonialism led the Indians to appropriate English as one of their official languages and that is um, that is a common ground of understanding for all lit literate people in India and like I am speaking in India right now therefore using English type is imperative to create a professional looking good uh, that are infused with heterogeneous Indian sentiments and this is very paradoxical as the field of graphic design evolved in India around the late 18th century theories of design influenced <coughs> the western matchbox designers to juxtapose contrasting fonts to create attractive designs like you see in the tans and blues in the left side of the screen and mira in the, in the top side top left of the screen uh, and uh, habitually so uh, when indian designers tried to acquire the contrast theory by trial and error they found hard to find synchronicity and harmony between two very different indian Indic scripts and this creative tension with Indic font is of course another reason of not finding a good number of vernacular scripts and package designs in India. So the Tansen and Mira, they are kind of, Tansen is written in kind of Persian uh, Islamic script and Mira is written in kind of Devnagari script. So it, they, are, they are constantly fusing uh, the, the Indic, the, the vernacular into uh, uh, English uh, 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 Latin script so that there is more reach and to, to make a professional looking good as I see it. So, so still we such, uh, find such specimens produced at this date that can be investigated upon. Uh, uh, the similarity of features across all the scripts, these are, these are the different index, the very few of them are here. The topmost are uh, the North Indian and the southmost are like the lower parts are from uh, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, are, are, are South Indian scripts. And uh, they have uh, similarity of features across all the scripts because it is not surprising if you consider their history, they are all derived from the common ancestor. Also note that the scripts are used for two distinct major linguistic groups, Indo-European languages in the north and Dravidian languages in the south. This illustration is showing how from a common source that is Brahmi, all the different forms arose for the modern Indic scripts and the Devnagari script descends from Brahmi, making it a relative of all other Indian writing systems except the Perso-Arabic Nasalic script you, that is used to write Urdu, that is a different origin. So the diagram also shows an early divergence between North and South Indian scripts. So the Devnagari texts read from left to right like those in the Latin script, that is the, that is like the only similarity between the Devanagari, like the non-Latin and Latin script. Unlike Latin, Devanagari hangs from a headline instead of standing on a baseline. And a dominant visual characteristics of the script, the headline usually extends across the length of a word. Here, it is important to realize that the Unicode system does not support all the major Indic scripts and they have to be abused with to accommodate within a Latin type anatomy. 
the indic or non indic uh, or non latin sorry the indic or non latin forms do not originally have any of this there is no bold indic there is no slanted indic slanted indic there is no other weights therefore using such ornamentations in the context of indic texts often obliterate the individual quirks and characters like the presence of a ball or a hook forms in the terminals as seen in the indic scripts and uh, there is no territorial value attached to the practice of typography and therefore i would like to take this opportunity to request the typographers and type scientists to conceive the science of uh, south asian language with utmost precision during this research i have come across great initiatives by the indian type foundry and i also would like to acknowledge people associated with type weekend especially eric maclaughlin and anagha narayan who are working particularly on indic scripts your interest and expertise is imperative to establish an appropriate hierarchy and grammar for the huge range of uh, complex indic texts the practice of indian bookmaking dates back to 1800s and therefore drawing new types of evidence uh, from the history of book tradition via illuminated manuscripts and scrolls political cultural wall writings or during pre and post colonial era and studying the folk calligraphies and the oral traditions etc will let us dig more deeply into the sources of original indic type system in india a miniature painting is is one of the very oldest art form and matchbox is i believe and i i i i presume that matchboxes are our direct ancestors of it because matchboxes are small it's pictographic it has uh, uh, illustrations and and it has um, written words and uh, it 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 is uh, often textual um, context is shaped by materials and technology in that case many classical indian texts have not reached a global ad- audience in its original form besides uh, that uh they are also inaccessible for indian people itself the modern printing by nature and birth carries a latin bias with it moreover the introduction of pin printing in india is highly tangled with colonial ambition the history of india as it is written is a forged history a very complex chronology and involute rituals have been reduced to a smooth and categorized documentation although there is no need to discard it but there again it has to be unraveled to remove the prejudices Uh, with the evolving narratives the call for creative direct action via matchbox images the constant hammering in small packets propagating repetitive information as we already identified them in the swadeshi genre of genre of matchboxes it is a fascinating tool to create a larger collective conscience i'm independently working on such a project based on recent socio political development which is beyond the purview of this uh, discussion but i sternly hope that more such designs will emerge in these times when we are facing rampant rise of global fascism uh, indian matchbox cover designs Uh, uh rightfully represents the epiphanies of the extravaganza that is india which lingers of seasoned masala curries exotic spices vibrant vibrant truck designs lofty terrains sugary confectioneries and claustrophobic sweltering cities macho heroes and sultry heroines uh i would like to conclude by saying that i expect the type connoisseurs to raise comments that will only nourish this conversation and make it meaningful uh virtual love and regards for all those who are sitting on the other side of the screen can't thank enough uh, type weekend for hosting this amazing type weekend um, namaskar thank you